Hello, I'm going to talk to you about the um, intervention Look, Listen, Do. Some people might call it attention autism or attention and listening. I'm going to just share my PowerPoint with you. Welcome to the training for attention autism, attention listening or look, listen, do. Um, this approach was set up by Gina Davis, who um, has done a lot of work and research into um, really working on the children and getting their attention. And as it says here, she's inspiring the children's attention by offering an irresistible invitation to learn. So why was Look, Listen, Do or Attention Autism um, set up? And the um, rationale behind it is to um, inspire that shared attention and communication and really trying to develop that shared attention as a foundation for communicating with the child. Um, she wanted to create a situation where children wanted to interact with you and communicate with each other as well. And when she did it, it was all about thinking about whether it was worth the effort for the child. Was it worth that child sitting and engaging? So it had to be something very interesting. When um, Look, Listen, Do was set up, um, it was really thought about in terms of curriculum links to the early years foundation stage and that sort of developing relationships and um, just learning how to communicate with others. It's also linked to um, Cooper Moodley Raynor 1977 attention levels research was done. Um, in the first years of life we, of the child, we know that they begin to develop shared attention and eye contact. They know how to read facial expressions. They develop turn taking skills and they understand that communication is a lot of fun. And um, the attention autism approach that follows this um, developmental um, program of steps because for a lot of the children that we work with these skills are very difficult for them to just naturally pick up and we have to teach it much more explicitly. So when um, look listen do or attention autism is started it's very important that visuals are used throughout the session. Um, this is mainly to share a message clearly to the child. It's also to enable the child to not be as um, anxious because um, there's a structure. Little simple drawings are used on a whiteboard and um, just a little symbol with a word underneath just is drawn while you're talking and it just enables the um, person to the, and the child to see what is going to come up next and build that anticipation for them. So as I said, a small whiteboard is just used with a picture and it might be the picture of the bucket, which is going to be the first stage. And then um, it will be what's happening next. And as it's done, it gets crossed off so the child knows that it's finished. The child has the board facing them while the teacher draws it. So key points for the lead adult. Activities need to be highly visual and appealing. So it's got to be something that's really going to grab that child's attention and sometimes different things will motivate different children. So it's really important that you find out what will get your child or your children excited and want them to engage and really focus. Um, it's really important that you're very prepared for the session. So if you're doing more than one stage, you've got to have all your resources ready because if there's any breaks, that obviously will stop the child from being able to focus and um, be a bit bitty. So it's really important that it runs smoothly. Um, it's also important that you rely on the other adults in the room who are supporting to be the ones that manage the children's behaviours because you're the person leading. You should not be the one also managing the behaviour. Um, another top tip is to do it in a room where there's no distractions um, so that children only have this activity to focus on. There's nothing else to look at. Um, I've unfortunately been in some rooms where it's just a bit busy and there's things on the walls and then children who find it very difficult to maintain focus are too busy looking at what's going on, on the wall display behind them or words if they like reading so it's really important for it to be in a very sort of blank space 
There are also, as I said, the supporting adults who are key to kind of making this work. So it's really important that they're there to manage the behaviour. We don't want them talking during the session to the children. We just want them to be using some sort of non-verbal prompts to enable the child to focus and also modelling how to, um, you know, engage and look. So just sort of maybe um, looking and saying, ooh, and, you know, just showing that real enthusiasm using your face um, facial expressions and some gestures just to to really model to the child how you would engage and focus. And when the lead adult is using language that she might be saying or he might be saying when they're moving something and describing it, the um, supporting adult can sort of echo that, but just um, really sort of, you know, allowing the lead adult to be the one who's leading and you're just in the background supporting. So, what does um, it look like? The first stage is stage one, which is called the bucket. And um, inside the bucket will be um, a whole sort of host of objects that you can put in there, which you would want the child to be engaged with. Um, so it has, you know, sort of light toys, clockwork toys. I'll show you some pictures in a moment. And then on the board, the whiteboard that I talked about, you would draw the bucket for the person, the children to know that this is what's going to be happening. And then you start with a little song. So it's something like this. I've got something in my bucket, in my bucket, in my bucket. I've got something in my bucket. I wonder what it is. And then once you've sung that song, you take one item out of the bucket and you look at the item and you hold it where the children can see it, making sure that the children are able to really maintain focus on it. And then you might play with it. So if it was a clockwork toy, it would move along. And as it's moving, you would just say very key words just to describe what's happening. So you might say, um, you know, crawling or um, chattering if it's clockwork teeth. Um, caterpillar, whatever it might be. So just using the keywords, not saying too much. And then when you finish with the object, you pop it back in the box and you say bye bye. You don't need to sing the song again, although some people do. Um, you might find that that brings your children back, but some people choose not to. And um, then you would um, bring out the next object. And when all the items are finished, you cross the bucket, bucket off the board and say the bucket is finished. And here's some examples of different buckets toys that you might use. So as I said, clockwork toys, light toys, spinning toys, different things that just engage the child's attention. Noisy toys. The rules for the bucket are, as I said, to enjoy the toys, but don't keep them out for too long. You want the child to just engage and then it's gone. And then you don't want too many items in one go. So only three to four items in one bucket session. And once again, um, you're wanting the child to look at you. So it's not about the child having a turn and touching the toys or getting a chance to play with it. You are just getting them to look. The idea is for them to maintain that, that eye contact and attention. Um, and as I said, show first, then add the words. Try not to ask any questions or to, to talk too much because that's just going to overwhelm the child. Um, and as I said, these are the mistakes, giving the child the toys. Do not do that because the idea is that they're, they're just having focused attention. Um, let, and then you can kind of, um, you have to be the one in charge. You're not letting the child dictate to you when you start and finish. You are the one that's leading that. Um, if you find that some children are not happy to be in the room while you're doing this, and they're getting upset or distressed, don't restrain them. Don't try and make them sit still. If they're not ready, just, you know, gently take them out so that it doesn't disturb the, the rest of the group. Some children just aren't ready to focus. Um, and also really important that you sit next to the child. Don't sit behind them because if you're sitting behind, um, they might get distracted and be looking at you, but also it enables you to kind of model that interaction that we were saying, making those ooh, ah, noises and um, smiling and showing that eye contact. Now, when children are um, engaged in bucket two and they've managed to maintain that focus, then it will be time for you to move on from the bucket to the attention builder. And the aim of this is to kind of sustain that attention for a bit longer. So um, you would choose an activity that has a sequence with a clear beginning and end and you let the ch children watch you set it up. So you might if you were doing something messy, you'd like take out your cloth and you take out your paints and different things and just talk through what you're doing with the children as you're doing it and really kind of 
build up that anticipation about what you're going to do um, and just getting them ready. And then if you're on stage two, you would have the whiteboard divided into two sections. There'd be the bucket and then you would have on the next side the picture of something else that you're doing. So if it was, say, a volcano, you would draw a volcano. Um, try use really good in contrast so that it really grabs the children's attention. So it might be black paper with white salt or use clear boxes so the children can see what's going on. And here's some examples of some attention builders. So you would, for example, um, spray the um, foam in front of the children. You would talk through it, what you're doing, and then you would do swirly patterns and engage the children while you're doing it. And then when you have finished, you'd say, um, you know, volcano finished if you're doing a volcano or foam, foam picture finished. And then you would tidy away and the children watch you as you tidy it away. Now, when children have been able to sustain that attention and manage to last through the bucket and then through to the um, next activity of stage two, then it's time to start introducing children to more of an interactive game in stage three. And the aim of this is really just to be allowing the children to shift their attention from looking to you to then kind of being able to look at what other children are doing in their group. Um, and um, what you would need to do is um, kind of almost have that role reversal that they're doing different things that you might have done in the first um, couple of activities. So first of all, you would demonstrate what you want the children to do. Um, and then the supporting adult gets the first turn to model what um, needs to be done. And then the children get their turn. And we're trying to get the children to learn that you have to wait for your turn because that's a hard skill for some of our children. And um, they need to um, if they get up to do something, then they've got to come and sit back down by themselves. We shouldn't be taking them there. We're trying to teach that independence about turn taking. Um, if the child doesn't want to turn, don't try and force them. Just move on to the next child. Um, some children just need to know what's happening. They're a bit anxious about what they've got to do. And so they might see it um, a few times by other children doing it and then want to have a go offer it again. Um, and sometimes don't do it in order, kind of surprise the children, choose different children dotted about. And there's also um, some arguments for that importance of actually not always getting a turn in some sessions and that you learn that um, sometimes it's not your turn today. Um, and that's a really hard life lesson for some of our children. But um, I have seen it in practice and it does work that children learn that actually today it's not my turn. Maybe I'll get a turn next time. And here's some ideas of stage three activities. So it might be um, that each child gets a chance to make the volcano and you pass around the tray. It might be that we've all got parachute and one child gets a chance to go underneath it and do something. And then they have to come out back out. So they're kind of um, taking their turns. And there's just some other activities with balloons that you might get the children to do just to um, give them a chance to have a go and then pass on to somebody else to have their turn. Now. Um, once children have reached stage three, then um, and they're kind of comfortably accepting, waiting their turn and they've got that idea of, um, you know, enjoying and engaging in some sort of turn taking game then or activity, then it's time for you to move on to stage four. Now, it's very rare that I see stage four happening in lots of schools because often people kind of often may only do the bucket and even stage two um, and then they kind of move away from these um activities but actually stage four is really essential because it's all about teaching your child to transition from being in a group to um, a tabletop activity which obviously we do so much in schools um, so that's the aim of it it's all about transition so what you would do is each child would have their own kit of something that they're going to make and it would be the same everyone had the same and then the lead adult would demonstrate how to make something and then they would invite the ch children to come and collect their kits and go to a table and then the children would go to the table um they'd probably be they will be at the same group as each other around a table and um then the children get the chance to take the things out of their box and make their own um activity of whatever it might be a craft activity i'll show you some examples um and then at the end, either the items can be packed away in the box or possible they can come back together and show what they've made at the end. 
And here's some ideas and say and stage four activities. So it might be that you model how to make a picture like the snowman and um, the children then have a go. It might be um, something like a Lego pattern and they have to follow the Lego pattern. It could be something more simple where they're just having a go at making patterns with salt in the um, tray or um, bubble print pictures with the bubble wrap. Or it might be a, a kind of uh, a skill so learning to do some washing so it's washing the cars with a toothbrush and once they've all been washed you put them back it's got to have a clear 